Previously on the bill. The jump before we got there in the story. Will! No, I can't do this. I'll do what? I'm gonna trap my statement, I'm gonna tell them what really Will. happened. Leader, get back in the interview room. Oh, I'm gonna use you as a source. Do you hear anything that might interest me? Anything at all? We'll make it worth your while. Street, it's causing havoc with a score on. Keep an eye on it, will you? All right, let's do cracks first then. Your porridge versus my bacon sandwich. You will be hungry before me, guaranteed. Right, whoever fails, subs the teeth. William, cleaner's already in the car. Good morning. Oh, and you're going to have the pleasure of Sergeant Stone's company this morning. Philip, what are you doing here? Mum, by the grace of Grace Dasri, here I am. Sierra Oscar to all units. Vehicle causing destruction of the driveway. 32 Reynolds Road. Any unit deal, over. Sierra Oscar from Sierra One, show us, dude. Morning, sir. Someone's had a good night. What do you reckon, Joyriders? Curtis Joyriders. Blocked. Sierra Oscar 543, can I have a PNC check on Lima November 07, Oscar Yankee Romeo, over. 543 from Sierra Oscar, all received. Should be a Peugeot. Registered keeper is Ella Simon Wynn Stanley of River Mill Drive. Over. Any bets on who was driving? Steady, Sarge. <laughs> right. Let's push you out of the way. Come on, muscles. Charming. Hold up. There's a phone here and a receipt with yesterday's date on it, Sarge. Three angels. They're at the club on London Dock Road. Two glasses of wine and another 90 quid's worth. I set up to have them paid it off at the end of the night. 1.54am. Mm. That explains the parking. Last number dialed on here was 1.57am, no caller ID. Is there a Simon on there? There is actually. Simon Wood Stanley. Sergeant Stone. Yeah, and this is PC Will Fletcher. Come in. Before you called, I was on my way over to the station. But the car is Ella's. But I don't know if it was her driving. Just for the record, sir, you know it's an offence to provide an alibi for someone who's been drink driving. No, you don't understand. I haven't seen my wife. She's missing. How long? I've been travelling. On business. I arrived back yesterday evening about 5pm from the Far East. It was our anniversary. I thought I'd surprise her. Only, when I got here, there was no sign of her. Well, when was the last time you actually spoke to your wife? Day before yesterday. Is this your wife's mobile? We found it in the car. I think so, yes. And what about this number? Do you recognise it? It's last dialed at 1.57am. Oh. Well, well, why would you just leave it there? She must have been in a hurry. Something must have happened to her. Is this your wife, Ella? Yes. Here's a more recent one. Can I keep this? This just isn't like Ella. Well, did your wife say anything about what her movements were going to be? She said she was going to stay in with a film and a bottle of wine. What about messages? Anything when you got back? Just one. Um, from our son. Hey guys, hope you're both alright. Mum, haven't heard from you in a while. Hope everything's okay. You're still on for Saturday? I'll speak soon. What's Saturday? Uh, he's at university. She was planning a trip up to Nottingham. Mr. Winstanley, I don't want you to panic. We found a bar receipt in the car with yesterday's data on it, so we're going to check that place out. Do you have any idea who she might have been with? No. Well, I need you to gather together emails, address book, bank statements, anything that might help us build a picture of your wife's movements in the last 24 hours. Well, Lila's probably twiddling her thumbs. We'd better chase up that number last old Nella's phone. We'll check out the Three Angels. Sarge. Hey, yes, she was here. I remember her. A bit different to the usual customer. When you say different, how do you mean, Mr. Kuchek? Oh, don't get me wrong, she's an attractive woman, but how can I put it? We have mainly a young crowd in here, you know? 
She came in with a girlfriend. They stayed quite long. You're certain it was a girlfriend? Yes, yes. Can I ask what this is about? We're investigating a report of a missing person. What kind of mood would you say she was in? Was she upset, sad? <laughs> I spoke to her very briefly, but uh, I got the impression that when her husband is away, she likes to enjoy herself. Especially if he has forgotten the anniversary. You got a CCTV from last night? Yes, please. So what kind of crowd do you get, is it? Uh -huh. Good crowd. Lively? Yes, you can say that. But never any problems. Ah, there she is, talking to a friend at the bar. Stop there. No, sorry, I thought I recognised someone. No. You see, she's ordering drinks. People come, people go. A good evening. Was that her friend buying a drink? Yes, I think so. Paying for a drink at 9.44 p.m. You got the receipts from last night? Yes, I have. We better track down her mate. You're quite well. Been all right? Yeah, of course. Been working with Leela quite a bit lately. How are you finding that? Fine. Good. I know it's been a pretty intense couple of weeks, but it's just like that sometimes, isn't it? If you've got anything on your mind, come to me. Jenny Bunn? Yes? Sergeant Stoner, PC Will Fletcher from Sun Hill. We were supposed to go to book club. That's how Ella and I first met. She said to meet up and go for a coffee, only that's not quite how things turned out. What time did you meet? Around five. I'm not quite sure what time I left. What, what kind of mood would you say she was in? Lively, fun. We hadn't seen each other in a while, so I was just glad to catch up. She's been spending a lot more time with these new friends of hers from the gym. Mutual friends? <laughs> I don't know them. With Simon away so much, she's been at a bit of a loose end. God, this is just so awful. How did the evening end? She offered me a lift home, and I told her no way. You know, we'd both been drinking for hours. I ordered a cab, and she said she was going to do the same. You didn't share a cab? No. We live in opposite directions. So you left her outside? In the foyer, yeah. Excuse me. Stone? The Three Angels is the kind of place you go and meet new people. Should she have left with anyone? No, no, nothing like that. Look, she just wanted to have a good time. I mean, I'm not saying that the thought hasn't crossed her mind, but with her husband away so much, it's not as though it's an alien thought to any of us. OK, thanks, Leela. We just traced the last number dial from Ella's phone to a Craig Blundell. That name ring any bells? Craig's her personal trainer from the gym. Not as awkward as well, we have to tell Simon. The door's open. Police! Hello? Hello, Wynn Stanley? Please. He's called. If you do not mention the question, something which you let Rolano call. You found with a stab wound to the stomach. So a nice middle-aged mum ends up drunk in the flat of a tennis coach. Personal trainer. Between 1.57am and 11 o'clock when you found her with blood on her hands? Yeah. Right. Mum, the paramedics think Alice in shock. They'd like the doctors to check her over before we take her right, in. Right, thank you, Leela. Can you go with Will and talk to the neighbours? They must have heard something. Right. Thank you. Hi, right. he's a big guy. He didn't go down without a bump. Now, obviously, you're going to have to tell the husband, but then I want you to go to St. Hughes, and I want to get Ella back at the Nick as soon as the doctors give us the go-ahead. Mm. So, what have we got? We think these are Ella's car keys. They match the abandoned vehicle. Cece are just getting started, but it looks like we've got the potential weapon. Hopefully, we'll get a print. 87 from 686. Any more assistance required? No, 686. Stay where you are, OK? We're fine for now. The biggest thrill all morning, seeing if you can top a thousand calories before lunch. Units deal with disturbance at Canley Register Office. Births, marriages and deaths. Sierra Oscar. Sierra Oscar from 686. We're just round the corner. Show us the deal. Well, if I'm not Terry Wordsworth Newman, then who am I? 
First girl, Milton Street infants. First girlfriend, Casey Carrigan. Okay, so let's just move away, shall we? First fag, back of the bag sheds, rug kid roll. What else do you need to know? Calm down. I don't want to tell him what's going on. Man lives abroad. He's getting married. He wants to see his family before the big day. He needs a replacement birth certificate for the marriage licence. He thinks, oh, I'll pick it up in person. Only man can't get replacement birth certificate because he's not who he says he is. I can't beat you, I say I am, because some guy walked in here four weeks ago, my exact name, even the words worth bit, and walked out of here with a replacement birth certificate all of his own. Result! OK, look, we're going to have to take this step by step, all right? I've got a flight this evening back to Australia. I've got every single penny in the world tied up in this. So when is the wedding? Two days. You nervous? What do you think? If I'm not on that flight with birth certificate, I'm history. Well, it's all true. Terry Wordsworth Newman, the register remembers it clearly. Some guy about the same age, they even joked about the name. You wandered lonely as a cloud. When did this happen? About four weeks ago. <sighs> so I think we've only got one problem with all this. How do we know that you are who you say you are? I don't believe this. I was in the Navy. Three years. That good enough for you? Well, obviously, it's going to take a bit of time to sort out all the details. How am I going to tell Naomi? When she finds out about this, I'm done for. Do you have any recollection of what happened at Mr. Blundell's flat? What's the nature of your relationship with him? Personal trainer. I'm sorry to have to ask you this, but are you having an affair with Mr. Blundell? No. You rang his mobile several times at around 2 a.m. this morning. What was that? He's a friend. I just didn't want to go home on my own to an empty house. Craig's been stabbed. I need you to tell me what happened. Did you argue? No. He made me coffee. I went to the loo. And the next thing I remember, you were standing there. OK. I'll come speak to you later. Oh. Where is she? Why is that like Simon, can I speak to her over here for a second? Ella's in shock, but she's going to be OK. What happened? We traced her to a flat this morning. The flat belonged to a Craig Blundell. Her fitness instructor. When we entered the flat, Mr. Blundell was unconscious. He'd been stabbed. I don't understand. What, what has this got to do with my wife? Simon, Ella was the only other person present. She doesn't remember anything. But given the evidence, I'm afraid I've had to arrest her. Our victim, Craig Blundell, found stabbed in the living room of his flat off Rennell Road. The weapon has been confirmed as a kitchen knife believed to belong to Mr. Blundell. So what do we know about him? Well, we've checked with Crement. He's completely clean. No form, no known partners and no living relatives. But we do know that he's Ella's personal trainer. What personal trainer as in personal trainer or, you know, close and personal? Well, actually, that's one of the things I'm trying to establish. Ella Wynne Stanley brought to our attention as a Miss Purr this morning by her husband. Now, as it stands, this wife and mother is our prime suspect. Sergeant Stone, anything from her at the hospital? Well, I spoke to her briefly, but she's in shock. She doesn't remember anything. Well, OK, what we do know is that at five o'clock, Ella meets her friend Jenny Bunn at the Three Angels Bar. Now, we're pretty sure they stayed there drinking till 2 a.m. It's around this time that Ella made repeated calls to Craig from her mobile. Next thing, at 8 o'clock in the morning, Ella's car's found on Rennell Road, which is very close to Craig's flat. So we believe she left the Three Angels bar and she attempted to drive to him. PC's Kapoor and Fletcher. You did a brief door-to-door, -door, didn't you? Yeah, one of the neighbours I spoke to heard raised voices at 3.15am. Good. 3.15, raised voices. Now, we need to fill in all the gaps on this timeline. If it was Ella, we still don't have any kind of motive. Now, what about her friend, Jenny Bunn? Surely it's worth another crack at her. Definitely. OK, Will and Leela, I want you to go to Ella's house, see if you can find anything that sheds any light on her relationship with Craig, all right? Diane and Emma, I want you to do some digging on Craig and the gym. See if he owes any money, if he's got any enemies, all right? OK, let's get on with it. 
Basically, I think Ella saw in me what she had been herself. In her 20s, she'd worked in the art department of an ad agency. Traveled, lived the life a little. I think she missed all that after she got married, had a kid. How did she seem to you last night, Jenny? She seemed odd. In what way? She's developed what I can only describe as a crush on this fitness instructor of hers. Well, Craig Blundell. But you assured Sergeant Stone that nothing was going on between Craig and Ella. I don't think she actively wanted a relationship. I think she was just trying to prove a point. What point? That she still could, if she wanted to. What, give hubby the hurry up, you mean? From what I can gather, Ella's been living life to the full a bit recently. Trips to bars, trips to clubs. But before last night, I wouldn't have said she was serious about Craig. What happened last night? He was supposed to meet us at the bar, but didn't. She seemed upset. Kept going to the loo to phone him. I don't know. She's changed. I don't know what's happened to her. She just seems almost out of control. It's like we're dealing with two different people. One's a, a mum and a housewife, and the other one's... 24-hour party person. Mm. Reminds me of a film I once saw. The husband worked at the bank all day while the wife worked at home as a call girl without him knowing. Your mind is a sewer. Yeah, D.I. Nixon. Yeah, no, no, we'll be straight there. That was Nikki, she's found something at Craig's flat. A couple of things. We've got another neighbour who had raised voices at around 3.15 this morning. A tiny spatter pattern here. We think this is where he was stabbed, so the attack happened inside this room and he collapsed close by. Any sign of forced entry? CSE says that whoever did this was known to Craig and was admitted to the flat by him. So it's definitely pointing towards Ella. Backed up by this, I'm afraid. Craig's mobile. This is the last of three messages from Ella. Let me down. I need you, Craig. I'm coming round, OK? Well, check this out. When we were searching in here, we found this down the back of the sofa. What's that, Craig's? Ella's? I don't know. What is it, crack? <sighs> smells like drain cleaner. We're sending it up for testing now. So, whereabouts in Oz do you live? Sydney. I moved there in 2000. I've been working double shifts on the City Circle line. I've saved every penny for this. Mm, typical Libra. You said you're born in early October. Don't believe in all that, do you? Can't help it. I'm a Sagittarius. Mr Newman, do you mind answering some questions? No. How many bank accounts do you have in this country? None. I, I moved everything to Sydney. Why? It's just that a new account has been taken out in your name. Terence Wordsworth Newman at the National Equity Bank, Handel Road. It also gets worse. The account contains money from job seekers allowance, income support, plus housing and council tax benefits. Did you take out this account? No, I didn't. Does the address flat 234 Skeet Road mean anything to you? Should it? It suggests that according to this, that is where you live. It's also where the bank and job seekers think that you live. There are a couple of other people also collecting benefits at this address. Do the names Paul Sim, Derek Stevens mean anything to you? No. Sounds like benefit fraud to me. We're going to have to go and check out this address. Until we've done that, it would be helpful if you wouldn't mind cooperating with us and staying here. That's good. Mr Newman? No. McNally? Kevin McNally. Who wants to know? PC Stamp, PC Armstrong, Sunny Hill. Hello. Mr. McNally, do you own this property? No. Rented. Can't see him just visiting. Then can I ask what you're doing here? Now you can ask me anything you like, Chuck. You got some form of ID you could show us, please. Yeah, sure. I'll just dig it out for you. Does the Dixon and Doc Green have to come too, does he? Do you live here on your own, Mr. McNally? I only use this as a place to crash. I'm a brickie. I got offered a two-month contract down here, a quick one, easy money, so I thought I'd head down to the big city. The barman at the Cock and Crown sorted it out for me. Paul Sim, Terry Newman. Is this the first time you've had mail from these guys here? No. I think they used to live here. As I say, I give them to the barman at the Cock and Crown and he forwards them on. Well, this is the guy you rent this place from, yeah? He takes these off your hand? Yeah, that's right. Julian. I don't know his second name. Do you mind if we have this? Thank you, Mr. McNally. You've been a great help. 
So it looks like somebody used Mr Newman's birth certificate to open up a bank account and is claiming benefits in his name. Well, at the moment, all the trails lead to this barman Julian at the Cotton Crown. Actually, he's the owner, Julian Marshall. OK, um, what you got? I've just spoken to the agents that let the flat we visited. The tenant is not Julian Marshall, as Mr McNally claimed. Hang on, I'm confused here. Tony, can you go and track down this Marshall character for me? And Sally, could you look into all the other people who've been claiming benefits at this flat? Uh, Derek Stevens, Paul Sim. Also, our man needs to catch a flight back to Australia. He's got to get married in a couple of days. OK, well, me and Kezia are going to have a word with Mr Newman and see if we can get him on his way. The Cock and Crown, yeah. It used to be my local before I moved away. Why? You've been in there recently? Oh, when I got back, me and a few old mates had a sort of a stag do for me. And we ended up in the Cock. Did you at any point speak to uh, Julian Marshall? Oh, I must have done. He's the landlord, isn't he? Was it a long conversation? Five pints of export and a bag of salt and vinegar, that's about the shape of it. Why, do you think he's the one who got me birth certificate? Maybe. But then again, for him to obtain it, you need your full name, your father's name, your mother's name, mother's maiden name, date of birth. Not exactly Mr Talkative. I mean, the only conversation I've ever had with him was... my wallet. Was your wallet stolen? Not exactly. I thought it'd been nicked. But Marshall brought it over and said he'd left it at the bar. And inside your wallet? Had everything. Driver's licence, credit card, receipts. Well, a wallet would give away some of the basics, but I doubt it would contain all the information that Marshall needs. Do you want to bring him in? No, not yet. Let's do a bit more digging. We don't want to let him know we're on to him yet. Mickey, I managed to get hold of the two other people claiming benefits from McNally's flat. Paul Sim and Derek Stevens, both local Sun Hill boys, both now living overseas. He's targeting people he knows will be around to cause him any trouble. Great. You get this. A year ago, Paul Sim gets a phone call from his mother. The bailiffs have paid him a visit. Apparently, someone had run up almost five grand's worth of debt on a credit card that he knew nothing about. I asked about the cock and crown, anything unusual. Apparently, Derek Stevens had a wallet nicked there once. Right, I've done some digging. Marshall's finances are all over the place. Also ran his name through Crimmit. 2003, he put in a false insurance claim. He was arrested, but it never went to court. So he's got previous? Well, we could wait for him at the job centre, catch him signing on with someone else's name if you want. But that won't be till Wednesday, and if he sees McNally before then, then he might catch wind of us asking questions. How about we do a bit of fishing here? I'll go to the pub and meet this Marshall character. You guys come in and follow me. I'll tell him I'm a local boy, done good, moving abroad. See if he goes for me wallet. Yeah, could do with a pie and a pint. I just got off the phone to Weller's gym. Craig was employed there full time, but he got the sack four months ago. What for? Someone made a complaint against him. The boyfriend of one of his other clients. Apparently, I think their workouts were getting a bit too strenuous, shall we say. Uh, I don't think Ella was his only conquest. Could be a maid, Tiff. She found out last night. Unrequited love. It's a possibility. Well, that's supported by Ella's mobile records. Five or six calls a day to Craig during the week and at all hours. Now, all one sided her calling him. She's a bunny boy. Though. But Ella denies the affair, and um, Jenny Bond said it's just a crush. Yeah, but she said it herself. Ella's changed. It's just like Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. Gina, anything back on the prints on the knife? Not yet, but I've just talked to the doctor at St. Hugh's, and Craig has got high levels of crystal meth in his bloodstream. And Ella was feeling faint, so they took a blood test from her, and she also has high levels of crystal meth. Ella? A user? And for some time, apparently. Well, she's not messing about, is she? Do you know how addicted this stuff is? If someone's making it here, we've got problems. Meth users can go two or three days without sleep and then they suddenly crash for a similar amount of time. Maybe that explains Emma's memory loss. Yeah, and if you're OD on the stuff, you get psychosis, delusions, hallucinations. Maybe she found out about these other women and she just flipped. Well, the doctor reckons that she's ready for interview, so I'm going to get someone to bring her in. Do you think Ella was the one that stabbed him? I don't know, that's why we're here, isn't it? Will, are you all right? Ever since you walked out of that interview last week, I'm worried about you. You can talk to me, you know, as a mate. I'm fine, OK? When you came from Barton Street, you had some problems, didn't you? Blew the whistle on a colleague. Didn't make me very popular. Didn't think I was cut out to be a copper for a bit. When I came here. Was it worth it? Honestly, if I had to make the decision again, I don't think I could go through with it. Why? Look at this. Perhaps. I think that's how they are next time.
I don't believe this. Where's my husband? We've taken Simon home. And Craig, is he? Well, his condition stabilised, but he did lose a lot of blood. Is he your boyfriend? Is he your drug dealer? Ella, we know you've been using crystal meth. Officers found a kilo and a half of crystal meth hidden in a bag under your bed. Are they your drugs? Ella, look at it from our point of view. That's possession with intent to supply. That is five years in prison. <laughs> in the beginning, it was just fun. It made me feel different and reckless, you know, like me again. Then I just wanted to make him see. Make who see? Simon. I just wanted to make him see that I, I, I was the same Ella that he had married. Not a wife, not a mother, just me. Ella, what happened last night? I just, I just remember bits. When I got to the flat, Craig had just come off the phone. They seemed agitated. Agitated about what? I didn't know he was mixed up in anything like this. I just said that I would look after his back for a couple of days. Who did the drugs belong to? I don't know. But I do know that Craig had told them that, that they had been stolen. But I guess that this person must have found out somehow. And I just thought that with Simon away, no one would ever know. So Ella's still at the bar. I knew it. What? Lucy, it's Stone. Yeah, we need to meet. If Craig has stolen one and a half kilos of this stuff from someone, then for everyone's sake, we need to find out who. Let's check out everyone we know who's got any kind of connection with crystal meth. Can't be that many faces around, can there? See if we can fit Craig into the picture. Lucy. I thought you'd forgotten me. Well, how could I do that? You're my star informant, aren't you? How's it going? Here and on the 14th of next month. If I stay off the game and off the drugs, I can have my boy back. And how's that going? What you got for me? Crystal meth. There's a lot more of it about, definitely. You ever take it? You're joking, aren't you? I never tell you I lost my limb in the first place. Christmas Eve. The lad's father went on a two-day meth binge. He was supposed to be looking after him. Only I had custody. So when the neighbours found him wandering around, social services weren't too forgiving. That stuff ruined my life. Who's bringing it to Sunhill? There's this girl I know. Did a job last week. A posh geezer. He often gets a couple of girls in. Drinks, drugs on the house. <laughs> Normally it's pills and coke. Only this time there's a guy there. Selling crystal meth. Name of the dealer? He's just small fry. My mate reckons the big noise around here is a geezer that runs that bar. Kuchuk. Kuchuk? What's that for? It's supposed to be a chippy, you know. I'm just trying to make it look real. Oh, that should be enough time for Tony and Sally to get sold. She's keen, I'll give her that. And obviously up for anything. Okay, if anyone makes a snatch and does a run, I'm just trying to stay close, OK? Yep. Wish me luck. Luck. Yes, Governor, I'll have a pot. I'll tell you what, no one, I'll have some fizzy. Got any fizzy? In here. Well, I'm celebrating. I just had a contract renewed. I work in Abu Dhabi. Just did one tour, they signed me up permanently. Got some red wine if that's any good. Red wine it is, cheers. So what are you? In the army or something? No, 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 no. Uh, master carpenter. Good hotels in the Emirates. It's alright, it's real good money. So I won't be coming back to this dump of a country, I don't know that much. Cheers. So, this is the bloke you're talking about, isn't it, Kachuk? Yeah, it's him. I've seen this a few times, but I'm pretty sure what she's got there is a rat. This is her showing them the rat. 
And this is the footage of Jenny and Ella leaving. So at 1.57, Jenny leaves the catch her cab. Ella's on the phone to Craig and Kachuk's standing next to the doorman. Looks like he's listening in. Ella's last voicemail message, what does she say exactly? You've let me down. I need you. Craig, I'm coming round, OK? So Kachuk recognises the rap. He wants a name and Ella gives it to him. Kachuk is the man Craig ripped off. Pretty good motive for a stabbing. So what's going on here then? You celebrating or something? Uh, yeah, you could say that. I'm taking my skills elsewhere, moving to Abu Dhabi. Sounds like you've had a bit of luck. I'm Helen. Peters. Mickey Webb. So you want to know if that good luck's going to continue? How do you mean? I'll leave it out. <laughs> good lifeline. Good health. See this here? This big line means you either have or you're just about to meet somebody. <laughs> Someone who's a good match. What are you? Gemini. Good guess. They're always looking for a better offer. So, could be talking Sagittarius. Your cusp of cancer. Whoa, whoa, what does that mean? Birthday between the 15th and the 20th of June. Blimey, you are good. It's the 19th. Why don't you do me? Um, yeah, my palm on me. I could go over there if you wanted. Yeah. Webb, is that a local name? Sorry, just nosy. Peters is Dutch, originally. My dad was local, I'm proud. Let me guess, you're named after him? No, my uncle's called Mickey. My dad's called John. But your mum's not local. Scottish? Irish, actually. Don't tell me. O'Reilly. Close, Murphy. And what was her name? Her name was Siobhan. Siobhan Murphy. Everything I see here suggests happiness. Smooth resolution to all your problems. Doctor, listen, I'd better get off for what's some packing to do. Take care. Targets, reads their palms, takes the information, all without batting an eyelid. Don't get too excited. I'll let Mystic Meg's on the move. All right, quick yourself. Straight to births, marriages and deaths. It's up through there. I'll go cover the back. Hey, wait there, Sonny. Where? That's W-E-B-B. -B. Tracing the family tree. Got stuck on the first branch. Yeah, I can't find my own birth certificate. Michael Webb? Yeah. Michael Webb, Sun Hill CID. Okay, you can do this. I don't have any choice, do I? Can we have quiet, please, everyone? The Angels. I'd like to speak to Yevgen Kuchuk, please. Speaking. Mr. Kuchuk, I'm calling on behalf of Craig Blundell. Ah, Craig. Who is this? Ella Win Stanley, I've got what you want. I just want to return it and have all this over with. Come to Sherlock Park, four o'clock. Put the stuff in a plastic bag. Sit on the bench closest to the south entrance car park. One of my men will come and meet you. When you see him approach, get up and leave the bag. Clear? Yes. And no company, please. Well done, Ella. OK, let's go. For the tape, DC Webb is entering the room. OK, I hope you don't mind, but we searched your flat, the one you rented out to Mr McNally, and we found this, uh, Exhibit MW1, a will made out in the name of Julian Walker Marshall and Jane Walker Marshall. Brother and sister. OK, I've also shown the suspect exhibits MW2 to MW21. Now, this is 20 names, complete with a list of details for each of them. Did you use the same method for each? Palm reading? No, what's the harm? They didn't need the money. It wasn't even theirs. It wasn't yours either. Is this your mystery Sagittarius, Mickey? In this country, to make money, you need money. If you run a private equity company or a hedge fund, everyone accepts. You borrow. We needed the money. We well, you know this is fraud. 
You realize you're looking at a custodial sentence. Custodial? You mean jail? Why did you do it? We inherited the pub from Dad. We grew up there. Only he got sick. And the place started losing money. We didn't know he'd remortgage until he died. Now, he would have been okay if it wasn't for his pension fund going bust. The government should have helped him. They owe us. We never wanted to hurt anyone. Jane promised me we wouldn't. Well, it's never a victimless crime, Mr Marshall, is it? One man whose identity you stole was stopped trying to get a birth certificate. He needed it to get married abroad. You almost certainly ruined his big day. Did your sister Jane organise this? We did this together. We're brother and sister. But I never wanted to hurt anyone. Okay, she's in place. No one's here yet. Emma, Diane, anything? Nothing so far, Gov. Nothing from my position either, Gov. Well, Kachuk didn't seem worried about Craig, did he? Call us a cucumber. Well, I guess the way he sees it, Craig got what he deserved. Jai Nixon, it's Stone. We're in three angles now. Kuchuk stood outside the club. It looks like one of his boys is leaving. It's his driver. Silver Saloon, index number Lima Romeo 56, Papa November Oscar. We'll keep watch here for when he comes back with a bag. Over. Listen, just relax. 20 minutes, we'll have followed that driver back to the Three Angels, arrested Kachuk, and we'll be back at the station in time for Crumpet. Car should have arrived by now. Right, here we go. The bloke coming towards her. Looks like he could be our man. Where's he parked? That's a good girl now. Just stand up and move away. What's she doing? Why is she not moving? Come on, Ella. Just leave the bag and go. She's frozen. You've seen a look. No! It's a trap! It's a trap! Let Kutcher know! It's a trap! Driver's blown the orbo. He's on the phone. He could be tipping someone off. Go, go, go! Cool. Go that way. Manny, block the door. Sarge? For force, man. No. Hey, you tell that to Lucy Thomas. Tell that to Simon Wayne Stanley. Hey? Mr. Kuchuk, let's look at the facts. We found 14 kilos of crystal meth and a small lab on your premises. Do you admit they're yours? No comment. Was Craig Blundell working for you as a dealer? No comment. Did Craig Blundell steal a kilo and a half of crystal meth from you? No comment. And did you, as an act of retribution, stab Craig Blundell? Stab him? Mr. Kachuk, Craig is lying unconscious in a hospital bed after being stabbed last night. No, 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 no. I didn't stab him. We have CCTV footage from your bar that shows you listening to a phone call. I went to his place last night to warn him. Mr. Blundell took something that was not his. He lied to me. He said he had been attacked. Somebody stole the goods from him. I told him, if he returned the bag to me by today, there will be no more words about it. The drugs, I admit, yes. But, but attempted murder. You cannot pin that on me. What the hell is he playing at? Well, if in doubt, deny, deny, deny. Yes, of course, he's telling the truth. Mm. Listen up, I've just had the results back on the knife. 
They've identified the third set of prints. The first two were straightforward enough. They belong to Craig and Ella. Third set? They belong to Simon. Simon Wynn Stanley? Yep. Apparently he lost his license some time ago for leaving the scene of an RTA. He was disqualified for 12 months and they took his prints then. Right. I'd well, better go and bring him in then. Mr. Wynn Stanley? It's the police. Well, check out downstairs in the garden. Leela? Plugs to plugs in three generations. Isn't that what they say? Stay back! Mr. and Stanley. All right, let's just take it easy now, Simon. You don't even know what we've come here to say. Oh, I know. What's the point? What's the point in any of it? You wanted to surprise her, didn't you? Last night on your wedding anniversary, you bought her a present. Only she wasn't here, was she? She was with Craig. So come on, let's just... Let's put that bottle down and you tell me what happened. He denied everything. Even then, he was lying. Simon, we know that you stabbed Craig. Proof's undeniable. There's only one set of prints on the knife. Yours. So you tell me what happened. You were angry, weren't you? You saw red. You saw everything he'd done with your wife flash in front of your eyes. But you know what, Simon? You did nothing wrong. He deserved it. You did what any man would have done. I was flogging my guts out! I... I just wanted to hurt him. To... to show him. He came to the door with the knife. He threatened me. When I looked down, there was blood. You stabbed Craig, didn't you? Yes. Why? It's all right. No, Simon would never hurt someone. I don't believe it. Well, he's admitted the stabbing. He thought you were having an affair with Craig. Because of me? But I would never do that to him. Simon! Ella. I'll do the paperwork. Could you show Mrs. Wynne Stanley out, please? I'm sorry, Ella, but you just can't wait here. It's Mr. Blundell. He's out of intensive care, and the doctors expect him to make a full recovery. I suppose I should be grateful. Look, son. Ella still claims after everything that she didn't have an affair with Craig. And I... What happens now? Well, we interview you, and you tell me everything you told Sergeant Stone. And then, depending on what the CPS decides, you could be bailed pending further inquiries. We were a family. Look, take this really slowly. Ella's technically a recovering addict. And Craig, he's facing his own charges. Now, all this may count in your favor when it comes to sentencing. So you think there's hope? One step at a time. Well? What happened back there? What are we talking about? Stone telling Simon he only had one set of prints. He lied. That's entrapment. But he did the right thing under the circumstances. He stopped him from doing something stupid. No. Just because he got the result doesn't make it right. He was way over the line and we both know it. Why are you defending him? He's a good cop and I trust him. So, Mickey, what's this with Mystic Megan, eh? Who's this new woman in your life? Sagittarius. Yeah, whatever. Mickey! Oh. 
Sometimes there are happy endings. I've just talked to Mr. Human and he said, if we all go off to the Seven Bells, there'll be something really nice behind the bar waiting for us, all right? I'll catch you up. Love that. Oh, nice Thank you, yeah. I hear there's karaoke there, too. Like that Tony near the mic. Come in, Leela. No, you guys go on ahead. Next time on The Bill. Looks like these two are targeting people at random. Now, let's get one thing straight. You need to get over the fact that we let Martin Parks jump. You think that's a good idea? I won't need to prove anything if I get a confession. Confession? 